good hacker with the right tools could be able to circumvent a firewall, but then what? How do they do it? How do they get in? How do they get out? Here to talk about uh, firewalls, how hackers get in, and what the future of secure networks is, the chief technical officer of One Secure, a man who knows a lot about firewalls because he created really what many consider the modern firewall near Zook. It's great to have you back. Thank you. We've talked about a lot of subjects. We've talked about how firewalls work and everything. What we haven't spent a lot of time talking about, and I'd love to find out from you, is how hackers get into systems. So there are two basic ways. Yeah. The first basic way is by exploiting some kind of vulnerability in your system. A hole. A hole in your system. They sometimes call them exploits because they're exploitable. That's correct. Right. So one way is exploits. The other way is to what we call social engineering, right. where they convince you to do something that then allows them to get in. It has nothing to do with the computer. They might come up to you and say, hey, Nir, how are you? How are What's you? What's your password? Something like that. <laughs> or can you please open this port on your firewall? Or get you to download the worm or a Trojan and install it in your machine and then have full control over that, it. That's the most common route is these email attachments, things like that, of, right? Yeah, that's the most common way of social engineering. Right, okay. Yeah. So that's how they get in. When they get in, what do they do? What's next there? So when they get in, they can be just malicious, breaking down servers or right. crashing your machines. They can steal data. Right. They can reformat your hard drive. Right. You, you so know, they can do spend, anything. Basically. They can do whatever they want. They have full control over your machine most, and your network. Do, do they most commonly uh, snoop around and then leave, or do they leave stuff behind? Um, sometimes leave stuff behind. A very common thing is for people to use home machines to launch attacks against enterprises. This is the distributed denial of That's service. That's correct. So yeah. what the hacker would do is they'll take over as many machines as they can, and then somehow coordinate them to launch an attack against some corporation. How would they do that? Um, they install a program on your machine, either by convincing you to download something or by exploiting some kind of vulnerability on it. And then at some point, they send a message to all those, we call them zombies, to wake up and start pounding some, some kind. Google, for example, Yahoo with tons of traffic. And that happened. That That's happened. happens to Yahoo, yeah. Uh, I wonder how many machines you think are compromised like that. Does anybody know? Um, well, people, I think, estimate there are about a million um, um, unprotected broadband always on PCs and they have the no US. protection at all. That's correct. Well, let's talk about the, the future of protection because, I mean, I have a firewall. I, 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 am I not safe from all of that? No. So let's, let's talk about, for example, how... So, no, you're not safe. Um, firewalls basically do port filtering. Let me, let's, let's illustrate because I'm going to say this is me and this is the bad guy. Yeah. All right. And I have built, because I am a good computer user, I have built a firewall that is protecting me against you, right? That's correct. So what happens now? So, for example, you allow port 80 in. I need to, right? Because that's the web port. That's correct. So you so run IIS over here. There's the a big hole. The information server from Microsoft. Right. And now the hacker connects to IIS. And what they send you is something like get. Uh, this is an HTTP, HTTP request. request. Blah, 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 but blah, blah. But this is a perfectly slash. legal thing, the firewall's not going to stop it, right? No, no, the firewall just saw port 80 and it that's says, it. That's fine, it's an HTTP request, you're a web server, I'm a web server, I need you to get through there, otherwise this won't work. That's correct, so you know, you can get something like get something.idq, question mark, a lot of characters, a lot of characters here, and suddenly you're compromised. This is how code red works, for example. Sending a normal request that is somehow malformed in the body of it and confuses the server. Yeah and gets it to do something So bad. specifically, Code Red will access the indexing services of IIS right. and create some kind of a buffer overflow. They send too much data. Right. So there are two ways to detect these specific attacks. The first way, you can look for the IDQ on your network. Right. So Does a scan. firewall do that? Firewalls don't do that. That once they open port 80, it's open and they don't care what's That's going on. That's correct. So there are products called intrusion detection devices. We talked about that last time you were here. Or intrusion detection and prevention right. devices that will go and scan all your network, for example, for .idq in URLs. So if I'm running, so now this has to be running on this machine, just like the firewall. Snort would be an example. It's an intrusion detection system. It's looking for this common .idq. attacks. That's and correct. it says, oh, like an antivirus. That's a sig this would be a signature, so common to the virus That's signature. Correct. That's all correct. Right. So that's but, a good way to do yeah, it. Yeah, so Snort can do that. The problem with Snort is Snort cannot stop it. Oh. Because what Snort will do, Snort will sit here and passively listen to your traffic. Only the firewall It will tell stop. you, hey, someone tried it, and the firewall doesn't look for it. Can they talk to each other? Not really. So Snort mm -hmm. just sets off an alarm and says, "You've been something's going on. And the firewall doesn't know about it, so that you better really check work. it. Okay. So another way of detecting it is using something we call protocol anomaly detection. If Th you remember... This requires that you know what the attacks are, correct. this Snort technology. I, I wouldn't, unless I know what the exploit is and actually actively look for that exploit, I'm not going it, to... Like it's like if there's a virus I don't know about, the antivirus isn't going to know. That's correct. The way we call it, you don't know about the attack of tomorrow. So if right. someone comes up with a new code red tomorrow... Future. 
you would know about it. So how can we, how can we block it? against those? So for example, what you can do is you can look for this very, very long set of data that's not supposed to be there. That's automatically a su suspicious sign. That's correct. If you read the specifications of HTTP, they'll tell you that there should be maximum length here. If you see Maybe 800 than, bytes, but if you get 10,000 bytes... That's correct. That's an attack. Okay. And that's called a protocol, protocol anomaly detection, where okay. you compare the protocol to the specs of the protocol, and any deviation is an attack. Are most hack attacks in pretty well known, like they're either too big HTTP requests, or they're malformed packets, or...? Many attacks exploit bad implementations that don't conform with the specifications okay. in order to succeed. Yeah, I mean, ideally, the software would say, well, wait a minute, that's 10,000 bytes, that's absurd, I'm not going to even... Look yeah, but you know who wrote the software, right? Right. Um, <laughs> they won't name names. Okay. Yeah, and then there are other issues that you need to consider. Neither of these will detect someone installing or getting you to install some kind of a Trojan here and then taking full control over your machine from here. Now, many firewalls, though, do look at outgoing traffic and say, this is not a port I allow. This is 12346. This is a net bus attack. You can't go through but here. What if it's 80? You allow 80. We do allow 80. So someone can take control over your machine over port 80. Why don't all Trojans use commonly known accepted ports then? Um, all the Trojans you know about don't use it. But oh, the Trojans you don't know about use the it. secret ones do. And because you don't know about them, you cannot use signatures and you can use this. You need to do other methods. Like other watching the kinds of traffic that's going on. Kinds of traffic, looking at the characteristics of the traffic and trying to see if it's something that looks interactive. This software doesn't exist yet. Um, well, it exists I can't commercially. Buy this. You can buy it if you have a lot of money. What do I do as a home user? I mean, I can't get this. So as a home user, you should be... Um, the, the good news for a home user is that it's basically you, maybe someone in the family. So you can... First, you can prevent social engineering by making sure you don't click on executables or have your... Don't open attachments. We say that all the time. Never open attachments that you don't know about, right. for sure. Right. Even if it looks like if it's coming from a friend, That's it can a be spoofed. Yep. You don't open it. Okay. That's the first thing. The second thing you might want to do is to block all the ports going out that you don't need. So can I block port 80 outgoing? Port 80 you shouldn't block, but all the ports that okay. you don't need, like port 33373 or whatever. I'm going to show folks how to do that on a Mac using. firewall, and it's the same uh, analogy for a Windows firewall. I'm going to show them how to do yeah, that a little later on in the show. There is another cool tool out there that you might want to try. It's an open source tool that's called Port Sentry. Port Just do Sentry. a search on Google for Port Sentry. Okay. What it does, it actually goes and fakes services on your network. So it will make a hacker from the outside believe that you are running FTP and talent and stuff like that. If they call those a a is that a tar pit? Is that what they call that? Where you kind of into it's a honeypot. It's honey a network pot. honeypot. That's what it's called. And when the hacker connects to those services that don't exist, right? You got them. You got them. You can program the firewall or a router to you block them forever based on their IP. So that's another you thing you might want to look in. at. All right. And are, you think this is going to kind of trickle down this kind of technology to consumers at a reasonable price in the future? Um, I don't know. I don't know. So today, it's, I mean, One Secure is one company that does something like You're that. You're doing this? Yeah, this is yeah. your company. So okay. what we're doing is we're taking all these intrusion detection techniques that we talked about and put them on a gateway device. So it's just one sits massive... right here behind your firewall. Right. So your firewall does the basic filtering, and we look into the traffic that the firewall has actually accepted and figure out if it's bad or not and throw it, it away from the network. It's not a technology that people can use at home, not, not just because of the price, but because of the complexity right. still of operating. It, it just shows how hard it is to keep a secure network. But That's if correct. You follow, we have a great article that I wrote, so I know it's great, about the seven pillars of security. And if you do those, you're doing the best you can. Uh, and, and, and in most cases, hackers aren't trying all that hard to get into your system. It's the banks and the big companies are trying. Or to if they get into your system, it's only to launch attack against others, which right. it's not that bad. <laughs> it's not that good either. <laughs> yeah, OneSecure.com, that's, that's the company that uh, Nier Zook works for. That's correct. And uh, if you are a big company, you might want to take a look at their network security solutions. Nier, always a pleasure having you, and thanks for explaining pleasure a little bit here. about how hackers are working to get around my firewall.